Hey, business sisters. Um, you know, th during this time, a lot of us are going through the refining. We're really going through the this time where God's really purifying our hearts to prepare us for what's about to come. So it's a blessing. So something really important that I just, it's, I can't, it's so important that I really wanted to share with you guys something that the Lord has really been teaching me. And I think it's just an essential truth to know is the real reason why a lot of Christians um, still have envy, bitterness, greed, and every other evil thing. And that's what I want to talk about. You know, in James, it, it says, talks about double-minded Christians, and it says, you know, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion in every evil thing are there. And I just want to highlight especially the self-seeking part. Because... Um, you know, God promises that if we obey him, we will enter the spiritual promised land. And the spiritual promised land is us entering into all the promises of God. So it's a place where we have no want. It's everything. We, we, we just have no want. And the reason why so many Christians are attached to the things of this world is because they, ha because they haven't experienced the fullness of God's presence. When we are in the presence of God, we have no want. And that's why Jesus said that the Father never left him because he always did what is was pleasing to him. So if we want to always have the presence of God in our life, um, we have to always do what is pleasing to him. And so this is, I want to just take one, one promise in the Bible um, that maybe a lot of us haven't entered into yet. It says that those who believe will never thirst again. But clearly by the fruits of our life, we can see if we're still thirsting because if we were totally satisfied with God, we wouldn't be looking for these temporary lusts in the world. We wouldn't be looking to the desires of this world to gratify us. We would be totally, completely satisfied with God. All our treasures would be in heaven if that were the case. So if we want to enter into the promised land uh, and into the promise of God where we have no want, the key to entering the promised land is obedience. And the Bible says that obedience can be summarized in two things. If we do these two things, the whole the whole law is fulfilled. The first, of course, we know is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. The second is to love your neighbor as yourself. But what do those two things really mean? Well, to love the Lord with all your heart means that you do all things for the glory of God. That's what it means to love the Lord. And then to love others as yourself. That means the Bible defines that as laying your life down for them. It means that you no longer look out for your own interests, but the interests of others. That's what true love is, is laying your life down for other people. So practically, that means that you give to your neighbor the very thing that you desire. So the reason why we have self-seeking in our hearts is because we think if we seek others' interests above ourselves, then we will be in want. We think, you know, if I did all things for the glory of God, that just seems um, like it wouldn't satisfy me, you know? But that's the wrong way of thinking. That's actually unbelief. So the root of this issue of self-seeking is actually unbelief. Because when other people are exalted, for example, they may think, oh, what about me? You know, and become envious or jealous. Some people think, you know, I got to be known. I got to be used mightily by God. I got to have a powerful ministry. And they chase after these things because their hearts yearn for recognition. Um, they're looking, you know, for love, acceptance, all these things. And they think that that's how they're going to get it. And so if some other people have the very thing that they want, it produces envy in them. So the problem here, again, is that they're attaining, they think that attaining that is what will give them the life. Other people think this way, you know, if I'm always serving, if I'm always the one giving, if I'm always the one turning the other cheek, what about me, you know? Who will take care of my needs? If I'm always doing good to other people, if I'm lifting other people up in prayer, Who's going to pray for me? Who's going to, you know, say nice things about me? And even with the act of giving, you know, some people think, you know, if I give away this, who will provide for me? If I give away my last bread, I'll be left hungry. But this is the wrong type of thinking because Peter says that you should arm yourself with the mind of Christ. You need to be renewed by the truth. And the truth is that God promises that obedience is what leads to true life. It's not by becoming known, by getting your needs met, by having riches, by having fame, that's never going to satisfy. True satisfaction comes by doing the will of God. So for example, if you love, instead of looking for love, 
God will reward you with greater measures of his love if you give away the last dollar that you have to another person. By the will of God, then God will provide all your needs. If you exalt and lift others up, God will bless you with deep contentment and acceptance. So this is the key here. This is how we overcome double-mindedness, how we overcome the lusts of the world, the desires of self, is by faith, by believing that God will meet all our needs emotionally, spiritually, financially. So practically, what you can do is you can write down everything that you desire. Say, God, search me. What is it that I desire in this earth, um, in goods, in other people, that is contrary to the golden principle? And say, God, I, I want to do everything for the glory of God now. I want to deny myself and prefer others. I no longer want to look out for my own interests. And when we live like this, God rewards us with his presence. And in his presence, presence is fullness of joy. It's everything that we need. We have no want when we live like this. God bless you all.